The 65 kilogram bicyclist, including the bicycle, initially at rest pedals up a hill. She reaches a speed of 3 meters per second despite experiencing a 10 newton backwards friction and a 20 newton drag during her ride. The distance and the height of the hill are shown. So the distance of the hill is 95 meters and the height of the hill is 11 meters. Let's start off by identifying what type of energy that she has at each time. So at the initial time, she's at rest, so no kinetic energy, and she's not above the reference level. So she actually has no energy at the initial time. So for initial, I'm going to write none and zero joules. All right, at the final time, she's reached the top of the hill, so she's above the reference level, giving her a gravitational potential energy. And she's also moving, so she's going to have kinetic energy. The problem says that she was pedaling during the problem. So that means that she's going to have work, or she performed work. She's also going to experience loss due to the backwards friction and the drag. All right, so let's go ahead and list the equations that we're going to need for each of these quantities. So I know the equation for GPE equals M times G times H, and for KE is one-half MV squared. So let me just go ahead and list over here that I'm going to need to know the mass, gravitational constant, the height of the hill, and her velocity right here. Those are associated with the GPE and the KE. Work and loss are both force times distance. So work equals the force doing the work times the distance. And loss equals the force causing the loss times distance. So underneath these two, I'm going to write F work have loss and distance. All right, let's go ahead and fill out some givens. So 65 kilograms is going to be her mass. Three meters per second is her speed at the top of the hill. Speed similar to velocity. So let me write that down as her velocity of three meters per second. The backwards friction and the drag are going to combine to be the forces that are causing loss. So 10 plus 20 gives me a force that's causing loss is 30 newtons. The distance of the hill, so the, the work and the loss, the backwards friction and the drag are occurring for this 95 meter distance. And this 11 meters refers to the height of the hill, which is in the GPE equation. So right here I can put the height of 11 meters. All right, so uh, one other given is I know that the gravitational constant on Earth is 10 meters per second squared. You might be using 9.8. All right, so first thing we can do is plug in. I see I have everything over here for GPE and KE. So I can plug in using the GPE equation M times G times H. So 65 times 10 times 11 gives me 71,000 or 7,150 joules. And then for kinetic energy, I can plug in 1 half times mass of 65 times the velocity of 3 squared. Gives me 292.5. I'm going to go ahead and round that to 3 sig figs. Giving me 293 joules. All right. This means that I know that at the final time, she has a total, combining these two together, of 7150 plus 293 gives me 7,443 joules, and that's going to be the amount of energy she has at the final time. So 7443 joules. I can also go ahead and write down that yes, there was work due to her pedaling. Yes, there was loss due to the backwards friction and drag. And at the final time, she had GPE and KE. All right, so 
Um, looking over here, I know I need to be able to apply conservation of energy. I need three of these four quantities. I need to know three out of four, then I can do conservation of energy. All right, so I know that the force, the force causing the loss was 30 newtons. That was the backwards friction and the drag combined. So if I do 30 times 95, that'll be the loss equation, and I'll get 20, uh, 2,850 joules. So for loss, I can put down 2,850 joules. All right, so let's go ahead and fill that out for loss. All right, now again, like, like we said, anytime we know these three, three of these four, then I can do conservation of energy. All right, so if I look at the energy that I have at the start, well, I had no energy at the start, and the energy that I put into the system, so the energy I bring in from an outside source, in this case, the person, I know that these two, let me go ahead and highlight them. So the initial energy plus the work will always have to equal the final energy plus the loss. Because the energy can't be created or destroyed. So any energy I start with plus any energy that goes in has to go somewhere. And it can go to loss or it can stay with the system and be our final energy. So that means 2850 plus 7443 gives me a total of 10,293 joules. So that's the energy I have at the, the end of the problem, which means I needed the same amount of energy either at the start of the problem or coming into the problem. Well, in this case, all that energy had to come from work. So we didn't start with any energy. All right, that means my work was 10,000. 293 joules. If I manipulate the equation, um, F work equals, or work equals force causing the work times distance, that can change to the force doing the work is going to equal the work divided by the distance. Just dividing that equation above, right here, dividing both sides by D. All right, so if I do 10,293 and divide by 95, I get 108. And that's going to be newtons because that's at force. And that is the average forward friction because forward friction is the force from pedaling. That's the force doing the work. And so I can just put 108 newtons for my forward friction.